Um, and I, I glanced at it and I thought, that's interesting. Uh, remarks at 7 p.m. by Dennis Crompton. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first I've heard about this. I don't know what, what, what sort of remarks is, are expected of me. I, I, I went back. I, Mike and I have known each other for, what, 45 years or something typically absurd as that. Yes. I thought, well, what, should I tell everybody about our sort of strange conversations in the cottage restaurant to the west side of Euston Station <laughs> where the, we used to go for lunch uh, when we were all working <coughs> together at Euston. And I thought, well, that probably isn't very interesting to these people. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I should describe the way that he was described to me by um, a beautiful lady, Julia Bloomfield, who I had supper with in Los Angeles last year, and the way that she described the experience, her experience of Mike at the AA when she was in her early 20s and he was in his early 20s. I thought, no, that's totally inappropriate to, <laughs> to tell people about that. And so I so, thought, so, well, maybe, I mean, Mike comes and, and stays with me in London every now and again. And it has this pattern when he comes. He arrives at Heathrow at sort of some ungodly hour, 6.15 in the morning, comes into London and, and gets a cab or somehow appears on my doorstep and I'm still probably asleep and my wife lets him in. It's now five minutes past eight in the morning. <laughs> and she says to him, would you like some breakfast? I've gone and got some, not milk, whatever it's made of, this funny milk that he didn't drink. So. <laughs> and he says, no, no, I'd like to just go and, and relax. And 15 minutes later, you find him sitting drawing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's great, but that's, that's the sort of thing he does. And I thought, well, that's, that's an interesting insight into his life, but maybe that isn't also, you know, it doesn't get us very far. Um, maybe the other bit of experience where he, he teases my wife, or has been doing for some years, because we had a problem with a blocked toilet. And I thought, well, it really hasn't got a great deal to do with the sort of work that might be around. So after, after all that going through my mind, which is basically some elements of panic about you know, what to talk about, I thought, well, actually, over many these 45 years or whatever, every now and again, Michael and I have a conversation about his work, or not necessarily about his work, but about the context in which his work takes place. I think that, that is interesting. And it, it's, it's the conversation behind the work which is interesting. You know, you look at an old friend like this drawing here, which I've known probably for 30 years, or more than that, it was in Archigram 9 or something, where it was 7, <laughs> <laughs> 7 yes, it's, it's 1967, so that's, yes, that's 40 years I've known that drawing. And I, I wonder, you know, how much, when, when you guys come into this room and you see that drawing, how much do you actually understand about the drawing? It's, it's a fairly typical of our group, sort of collage of, from that period. But do you understand what's going on? Do you understand the conversation be behind it? Do you even, are you even aware of the conversation behind it? Now, I'm not going to spend the next sort of half hour telling you about that conversation, but that's part of the interest in what Mike does, is the conversation behind it what he does, not the graphics, not the sort of, I don't know if it's on here, I was say to somebody earlier, you know, a lot of this stuff that was stuck down 40 years ago, <laughs> the, the glue is coming through, and I spend time when people want to publish them, I spend a lot of time, you know, digitally reconstructing the drawing. So, but that, that's not the point about the drawing. The drawing is, is something which is, is, has a narrative to it, has a story has a conversation behind it, which Mike and I probably had at, at various times over the last 30 or 40 years. You know, there was a period when the, the Andromeda uh, uh, galaxy uh, was enhanced on the drawing. And that was, a, again, it was a conversation um, about the movement of the galaxy towards the Earth and mm -hmm. so on, which I, I'm certain, looking at that drawing, you, none of you read that conversation into the drawing. Now you've got it. Now you've got it. Right. 
So that, that was one thing I thought I, I should bring to your attention this evening in a, this British sort of way that we do things, is to bring to your attention that the drawings behind them have a conversation, and it's the conversation which is the really interesting bit of the drawing. But the drawing itself is it's wonderful. I mean, they're incredible, beautiful drawings. But the conversation behind the drawing is, to me, far more interesting than the drawing itself. I enjoy the drawings. You know, I enjoy your drawings like I enjoy Ron's drawings and Warren's and Peter's and David's. It's enjoyable as a drawing. But the conversation behind the drawing is the thing that is really vital to try to understand what Michael is about. And the other thing that um, it beginning, we're beginning to be able to deal with it 40 years later, and that this strip along the, the side here is interesting because the other thing that's important about the drawings is that they're dynamic, they're not static. They're about a changing situation, <coughs> and it's a snapshot, it's a frame from a film. And you have to also read the drawings in terms of that continuity of movement of dynamic. And it, that, those are the two points that I'd like to make this evening about the drawings. It's the conversation behind them and the fact that they're part of a dynamic progression rather than a static, fixed point of view. And they are always can I, changing. Can I offer an American point of view? <laughs> 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 the British point of view? Labius. Uh, no, uh, to me what's uh, very alive about because I don't know the conversation behind the drawings. Well, you know some of them. You and I had supper one well, evening. We, we, we talked about... We've got a history with them, but um, say being an American, there is some difference between the two cultures, the British and the American. I'd say that I have a, a, a kind of materialistic attitude, not so much about the cultural moment and the historical moment, but about the physical presence of the drawings. Uh, and particularly the fact that the drawings pose questions to me. You know, there may be a narrative there that's intended by Mike or has been discussed over the years, but the, the questions that are posed by the drawings starting with, well, what is it? What's it about? Now, why is it architecture? These are like the basic questions of one confronts, right? And uh, I think as you go into the nature of the drawing, you begin to study the drawing. You see the structure. You see the, the nature of relationships. You see the tectonic quality. And you see the kind of philosophical questions that begin to emerge about space, about perception. And this is what endures me, I mean, about Mike's work, and I'm sure for you too, Dennis, I'm not trying to say it's some unique American perspective. But I, I have kind of a hard-nosed attitude in that respect. Because the drawings have to talk to me today. I, I can't be interested in what they once were. And I think these drawings, these ideas that Webb has managed to crystallize uh, are still alive. We're not just watching a historical exhibition or a tribute to a great man who for decades is labor. Yeah, all that's fine. But the drawings are still alive. The ideas are still intriguing. So that's my kind of American perspective. Ken? <laughs>